Welcome to the Joel Fleischman Happy Hour Podcast, episode number 87. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. I'm drinking Cheers. Russell Light. Means well. Cheers. I'm with the Celsius. Prost. <laughs> Prost. Are you German? Mm. No, I should have said Nostrovia. What are you? Ooh. Polish. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Speaking of her last name, Amber. Yes. I've never been able to say it. You know it's that. It's okay. And Drusek. No. <laughs> it's okay. And drastic. And drastic. Like, I'm going to take it, this to drastic measures. It should have been. Like, by now, I should know that. <laughs> it's okay. Or I should have practiced. And on my left is Sarah Keen. Hello. It's still hard to say. <laughs> Originally Sarah Potts. It'll be four yeah, years this month. Oh my gosh, I still say Sarah Potts. So four years. These girls are like the, Amber said it, like the OG. These are like my oldest <laughs> daughters. I feel like they're all grown up now, and I knew them when they were just little munchkins, selling <laughs> cabinetry, not knowing what the hell they were doing. But I was super positive, huge grins on their faces. I had no idea if they were going to make it or not. <laughs> and I'll be there. This is in Brookfield year... I think it was year... 2015? Yeah, eight years ago. Yeah. Oh, it seems like forever. I know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all, they're all grown up now. So they're really, really... Oh, this beer is so good. I'm crushing... If you haven't had a Drexel light yet, or hit up somebody <laughs> at Drexel. If you work at Drexel, your beer's coming. It's on order. We got another 140 barrels coming. Holy moly. For real. We this got is my first 15, time trying it. cans coming. Yeah, you're one of the first Drexel team members to have it. It's really good. Unless somebody's bootlegging it off the side. So what do you think? <laughs> it's really good. It's our first review. I like a right. light beer, so I like this. What would you compare it to? Oh, man. I'm not like that. Hmm. I don't know. Like a light beer. Is it a like if you would, yeah. Yeah, beer, I would say light? close to like a Coors Light, I would say, maybe. But it has a little bit more flavor because, you know, people compare Coors Light to like really light like almost water like yeah i think this tastes like a coors light but when you swallow you end up having a little beer flavor yeah for sure is not in a ipa yeah no poppy mm, way. no it's like i'm for sure drinking a beer this yeah. isn't just water no, it's, it's got good. a good flavor yeah i like it good summer beer it is but it's light it's not like mm-hmm. a dessert like i'm no. gonna need two of these and probably be pass out yeah. or yeah. be bloated no you can drink 12 of them <laughs> yeah, or 24, or whatever you're into, for those listening, as long as you have a driver, like Wisconsin Blee, right, or yep, whatever. Yeah, that's yep. exactly Cool. It. So yeah, 10 cents is going to the local, 10 cents a can to the local trade schools. That's going really well, so okay. we're really, really excited about that. So that's cool. Cool. So, but they are on today primarily, we'll get into, if you're listening, like, what is this about? They are our virtual designers. Which is amazing. The entire time our screen will be scrolling, but a lot of you listen to this on podcasts as you're driving or doing other things, mowing the lawn, whatever. What is a virtual designer? Yep. So I think technically we we like to go by virtual design consultants. Oh, I'm sorry. That's no, correct. it's okay. It's okay. This. Yeah. About yeah, because yeah. like virtual designers that gets that into one. gaming, like that gets yeah, yeah, into yeah. a whole correct. other world. But virtual design consultants. So basically, we take a model. And we bring it into our program and, and we kind of consult a house, a home. A home that's modeled in a rendering software, drawing software. And then we bring it into our rendering software and we consult with the clients as to what finishes they'd like to see, questions they have about their home. I mean, everyone's used to looking at black and white lines on a piece of paper. How could anyone know what their cathedral ceiling really looks like? So you conceptualize it. Mm-hmm. Yes. You do bring your own flair of design and personality, right? Yes. So it is not like, please tell me what you want and I'll finish it. Absolutely. Give me the six finishes you like. Please send me the four colors. You help bring that to life. Oh, yeah. We organize sure. it almost too much. We organize it down to a point so that we're showing them what they want to see. Right. But, I mean, you're actually using your creativity. To Absolutely. Yeah. Process. Absolutely. And, and so it is truly, what I always say, is truly HGTV stuff. Mm-hmm. It is. It's truly like, hey, here's a cocktail napkin. Now we threw it in black and white. Now so true. you are exactly know what it was. So let's just go back because I think this is great. It's like part of your career, but it's part of the Drexel journey. It's part of what we actually do now, right? Mm-hmm. So you were cabinetry designers and like, and doing really well for yourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys are like the rock stars of the growing rock stars, the young, talented, up-and-comers, I would consider. Yeah, okay. A team about how many people? 
we were about 15 in our location. Yeah, I think there was like were, yeah. 36 yeah, total. Yeah, you guys were like the yeah. people, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yep. You definitely had that confidence. You knew that, Sarah, right? Yeah, like, for sure. I got my shit together, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So how did this start? Do you remember the first conversation? Yes, <laughs> I do. Yeah, you're pretty good at that, Amber. Yeah, I remember this. So I had a client during cabinetry who we remodeled their kitchen and Oh, through talking and doing the meeting. What year is this? What year is this? Oh, this is probably 2019 because it was right before COVID. Yeah. So four years ago. Yeah. So, um, and I was talking to them about their dog, about what kind of beer they like to drink. You know, I like to find out those things. So when we finish the kitchen, we can put a little something together for them. Hospitality. Yes. We didn't call it back then. No. You guys were a little mm-hmm. ahead of hospitality in your department, but you two as individuals. For sure. Now we hope it's normal. So, yes. Yeah. Listen for and cute. Listen for cute. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. So I would put in the, as best I could, in the 2020 program that you use for cabinetry, I'd put a dog in there and I'd put a little beer on the counter with the label of whatever beer that homeowner liked. And then... I remember telling everyone in cabinetry, like, oh, I just wish I could do this for, like, a whole house. That'd be so awesome. And then Beth kind of overhears me saying that. And I'll never forget, she said one day in one of our, I think that we had tacticals at that time. Yeah, we did. I, so this must have been a little post The beginning. Yeah. Right the like, right at the beginning. Oh, no, it's when we were doing our huddles. In huddles, the huddles, that's what it huddles. was. Yes, so not tacticals. Not mm-hmm. Huddles. Yep. And she said something like, oh, yeah, Joel mentioned something about this. Um, is anyone interested? And part of me was like, is she talking to me right now? Right. Like, right. is she, does she mean me? <laughs> and it wasn't until after the meeting that I reached out to her and was like, Beth, I want this. I want this. And then that's when she put me on a team with Dan. Dan Eater, shout out yep. to Dan. Shout out to him. He was still in research and development. Yeah. yeah. It's not oh, a yeah. from a submarine too soon. But he's still oh, a smidge too yep. soon. A smidge too soon. Yep. <laughs> yes. Soon. Yes. Okay. And yeah, him and I started looking into Revit, Twin Motion, SketchUp, um, Lumion, Lumion. Mm-hmm. all these so different you, so Enscape. So how many days, because I remember it was awesome, how many days from you saying, hey, I want in on this, that you literally quit your career, jumped in the submarine, and just punched out and said, hey, let's invent this, let's do yes. it. Yes. I mean, honestly, I feel like it was like... It was less than a week. Yeah. Yeah, I contacted Truly. you, we talked, and I said, yes. oh, go. Yes. Um, again, for right, that's how Drexel does it at times, ready, yep. fire, and yep. yep. We didn't have a budget. We didn't have a plan. There was mm-hmm. no safety net. Amber was like, what if this doesn't work? I'm like, I don't know either, but it's got to work, right? But I'll tell you that there were days when I would come home, and I would just be crying. And he's like, what are you, what's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know if I made the right decision. This is so over my head because it was all rabbit stuff. I couldn't get to my my rendering portion of it yet. Right. It was all of the background work mm-hmm. that I was like, oh, we learned AutoCAD in college. In right. And yeah. it's like, we <clears throat> never got to experience Revit. So here mm-hmm. I'm learning this whole new program with Dan. And then that's when I would say the saviors, the angels, Sam and Tommy came on board. Oh, right. <laughs> and they are masterminds. Shout out to them. Sam yeah. Cracky and Tommy Pearl. Right, who are still on our team. Yep. Yes. Designers now. yes. Back then, they were straight R&D as well. Yeah, Literally masterminds. making the specs on the windows. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if you guys remember. And even back then, you know, I've even calmed down a lot from those four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, in some ways. Um, some ways not. But in some ways, I've calmed down a lot, right? Because I would just blow you guys up and be like, yes. what are we working on? <laughs> yes. And you'd be like, Windows. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I know. What the fuck? It was such a what long process. Mean? It was like, such a long windows? process. Well, this is how we make a window. I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, dude, we got like four people going down this path. I know. I'm like, I don't know where are we going. I know. Was, CSV codes, like all things that I was like, am I caught up? What am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. So when we finally got and it to a no point. Market, we have no customers. Yeah. No. Asking for it, really. No. Right, mm-hmm. we're bringing this to the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, drink to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, did, seriously. Did kite, what did the you say? I'll beat your shape. <laughs> yeah, what did you say? How did you say? The Strovia. The Strovia. Yeah. yeah. My grandma, we always made fun of him, like, it sounds like you're saying still love ya, so we'd always be like, still love ya. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Were your, were your grandparents very Polish? Um, my great-grandma spoke straight Polish. My grandma can still kind of speak it, but... That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, my, my, all yep. my grandparents spoke um, pretty good German. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Some mm-hmm. of them were 
my grandpa Gouchard even he won't even send numbers, you know, the one to today. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah five, sure. Six. <laughs> Let's say it was an accent. Oh, very yeah. much, yeah, yeah, very strong accent. I love that though. Oh, I loved it, yeah. And then we actually, I'm so old, we had builders that would come that would talk to me in the German. Really? A little bit just to screw with me, right? Yeah. Oh my god. We had Jacob. Oh, yeah, young man, how are you today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good morning, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say, Hi. Good morning, right? Yeah. So good morning, yeah. Jacob. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you. Yeah. Kind of go on, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can just, you know, good German boy, Fleischmann, Fleischmann. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, Too I like, it was really cool. It's yeah. good stuff. I miss that. It makes you wish that you knew more about the language, I feel like. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the culture and I all still that do. stuff. Yeah. Babble. I'll get on it someday. Yeah. Um. No, so yeah, back to it. I was. Those translators ruined everything for I us. Know. Yeah. I know. Okay, go ahead. No. That's okay. Super um, sidebar. Uh, <laughs> where was I? So Sam, Tommy came on. Making windows. Making windows in the little, in the conference room down there for weeks. And it was just like, is there any end to this? And finally, it got to a point where we were making the template. Sam was making oh, the template. COVID, right? So this is, yeah, and this is huge. So a template, people don't realize this because some other people will be like, well, we, we use Revit too. Can't we just give you and Sarah our Revit models? And then you guys can render yeah, it from there. Play, like, yeah, it. and it's like, like, like does not work that way. All of those months that Sam, Tommy, and I were in that room doing CSV codes, creating windows, creating doors, we were doing things that no one else has. Right. So again, if our comp when, when you talk to our competition and they say, "Well, we do renderings too," I just chuckle. I know. Like, no, you didn't have four amazing people sequestered during COVID. Mm -hmm. This is proprietary software that is one of a kind in the world. Yeah. You have nothing close to this. Yeah. Truly. It is like, true. Like, no, you don't have renderings. That's such a lie. Yeah. No. But we do what Drexel does. Like, that's crazy. There's like, no way. It. There's no way unless if you, so there's something that you can do on Revit called model in place where you can pretty much create anything. But do you know how time consuming that is? Right, especially right. like a, our competition. Yes. Was, home design service companies yep. that are lumber yards, they're not investing in no, this. Mm, no. So the long. investment overall is just insane, the amount of time and effort so that So many hours and years did it take? How many years did it take more back So we hours? started in 2019, because it was April of 2020 when everything went down. Yep. Yeah. And I remember being at home doing this on some days when mm -hmm. at first that started. And then we came in here to Campbell Sport and we just cranked it all. And we were here, here probably... When did you come on to residential design? I came on in August of 21. So yeah, it was pro it was a year. It was at a least year, a year. Yeah. yeah, at least a year. Full-time wages, every day, all day, R&D. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. That's amazing what we have up there. That is like people's blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> so Times true. a million. Mm -hmm. You're going to make me cry. I'm, I'm going to cry. <laughs> 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 I'm going to cry. It's so cool. I mean, I... We have so many people that watch it internally at Drexel that go, why is it every builder in the state? Why would any homeowner not use this service? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we're okay busy, but not that swamped. So Sarah, how busy are we right now? Where, what's the lead times? What do we charge? Like roll it out to me like I'm a fifth grader. Okay, <laughs> okay. so okay. we, right now, our lead time, so be, there's two of us for the whole company to, for starters. So it's a two person team for the virtual design. I would say where if somebody and virtual means if I'm in Green Bay or five minutes from your home, everything is done over the computer. Correct. You don't do in in house. I mean, reason we do that is time efficiency for both parties mm -hmm. builds the cost down for both parties, and we've gotten really good at yep. it. Right. Correct. We um so it starts with a one hour consultation that we do virtually via Google Meet bucks. with the client. Um, we're currently doing the um, consultation complimentary. Thank you. I yep. couldn't think of the word. Yep. That's because it's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> consultation. Complimentary. complimentary consultation. Um, the first hour is free. The first wow. hour is free with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and typically we can get everything done in that hour just based on how we have everything organized. That's the big interview. That's the big. What yep. you yes. to do. Yeah. And then a big thing for us is if clients have Pinterest boards, we um, connect with them that way. And that just saves so much time on our end, too, because, mm -hmm. you know, most ideas come from there these days. Yeah, they should. Mm -hmm. And then um, we so every project we have done is different but 
to give kind of a generalized idea, if somebody chose to do the interior, the exterior, and then the interior main spaces, which would include the foyer, dining room, great room, and kitchen, that would take us about two weeks to turn that around. If someone just did the exterior, it would be about a week. And then the average cost of that? So we do it by packages. The exterior would be three seventy five. If there's an exposed basement, it would be four ninety five, just because it takes. A little bit more time on our yeah. end with landscaping and then 495 for those main spaces that I just mentioned and then we do have clients who add on rooms like powder rooms laundry master um, and we do those at $95 an hour and then, we just and that's the same with like what about heat making changes that's $95 an hour correct yes. yep right okay so yep. $95 an hour like take it wherever you want to go correct. Like, yep. on your plan yeah yep. no worries you didn't like blue you like red you want to go back to blue mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it takes me I'm gonna build a billable hours yes yeah cool yeah. And you, are, how far is the lead time so right now? If I call you today, when can I get in? Yeah. And then how long do I get it back? So what's great is that we use Calendly. I don't know if you know that we use Calendly, so that way, if yeah. a residential designer or I think that was my idea. What's your idea? What's your idea? Zing. Hello. <laughs> I do have some ideas. I do have some ideas. There are once in a while, maybe only a couple times a week, where I'm like, you know, ego kicks in and Superman cape, where I'm like. That's why I'm the CEO. Like, <laughs> Calendly. Like, yes. And then there are Tuesdays where I'm like, I don't think, I don't think I'm worth the price they pay me. Like, I, think I'm, <laughs> thinking that I'm, I don't know what I did today. I went to like four meetings, made people laugh, and then went home. Like, I don't know. Well, then some days I'm like, oh, yeah, it made, made a difference. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so we're using that. So whenever a residential designer or anyone at Drexel has someone who's interested, they can just send them the Calendly link. They go on there. They see what days were open, and then they can set up that appointment, and then it gets forwarded to us, Sam Smith. Stole that from the hair. Exactly. Hair yeah. Stylist. Make yeah. it as the easy as possible. For the ones that came out with the Calendly. Yeah. yeah. Right, mainly, right? That's where it's taken off. Yeah, for the sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's been really nice because it links right up to our calendar. So let's say, like, for an example, I mean, where do I want to go with this? I was going to say. this, right? This yeah, podcast. this. Yeah. We could block off this hour. Yeah, you could go into Calendly, click this hour. It sends right to our, yep. our calendar. Right. Yes. Or vice versa. Yep. Can't we can, you right yes, now we can block it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. for sure. Exactly. Okay. So lead times. So right now, if someone would look at our calendar, next week is open to schedule an appointment. So get on it. Do what do you guys do if you don't have a good appointment? And hairdressers go home. What do you guys do? Pull holes in the yard. Oh gosh. I don't know if I'm cut out for that, <laughs> but we do have projects that we're currently working on now. However, we do have our website plans for the builder membership that we have that um, yeah. need constant updating and working on. Working on yes. the model right now. Um, it's done. The model is done. The model is done. The model is done. The model is done. <laughs> but no, that's what's so crazy though, is that we look back at, I mean, I made, okay, so we're, we're this is brand new. No one's done this before. So yeah. when we were creating the website plans, first of all, it was myself only before Sarah came on. So I was creating them in this program and little did I know that how it linked with our drawing software, that that wasn't gonna be a thing in the future. So now I went back to work on the model and it wasn't linking anymore. And I'm trying to change it from a flat ceiling to a cathedral ceiling, and it's not linking. It. So I had to start over. Oh, so wow. now it's mm -hmm. like, okay, we gotta get back in there and make right. sure that these are all updated so right. that if someone wants to use yeah. it, it's not starting over from scratch. So that's on our to-do list. Yeah, that's there's great. a lot of like yeah. IT stuff that her and I have to do too for yeah. like the programs connecting the in themselves. Technology for sure, we're always yeah. learning, we're always watching like the tutorials the company comes out with so that, mm -hmm. because the, the program that we use is a lot more, I would say it was primarily came out for video games. So it is, you know, a little bit different than what we wow, use it for. Crazy. It's I so mean, crazy. we could use an Xbox controller if we wanted to on a day to day. I think my thumbs would get sore, yeah, no, but thank you. that's pretty cool. It's <laughs> <not> crazy. <laughs> it's just absolutely gone so wild. I have so much input, Marcus. I saw you writing notes. You're pretty good at this stuff. You're also a techie guy. This is due to you too. What questions do you have? I guess what have you guys learned from? in using the softwares, right? From when you started, you kind of went through the process of like, oh my God, is this right for me? Yeah. Am I going to get there? Yeah. Like, what was like the, oh my gosh, this is awesome moment for you when you, you know, it could be again at the start, it could be something you learned recently, but what was the moment where you were like, holy cow, this is, this Our is Our first really client, 
I still remember her name. <laughs> Go ahead. Enjoy Holly Kostechka. Hi, Holly. Shout out. Shout out to you. Polish, that's the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, um, yeah, she met with us, did the consultation, and Sarah and you're I like, were together. I have no idea if she's going to like this or not. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Because the world has not seen yeah. it, right? You're like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's just Joel saying it's going to be great. Exactly. <laughs> and she gave, we did the consultation. She gave us her ideas. And at some points, people say this a lot, like, you guys have design freedom. Design freedom. I don't know what, it, what I want to do with the lower level uh, I think they need to go further, right? Like, I think you guys got to go further with that, right? Because yeah. they really don't. They're coming to you because they don't know and they want to mm -hmm. lean on you and for sure what you now you yeah. got to pry that information out yeah um and be good listeners and find good cues of what they're saying but if if you make them do too much work then why did they come to you exactly. right and side note experts. and side note on that the amount we're keeping a list of the amount of people clients that we've had that have asked us after the fact can you put together a list of every single thing that you put in this rendering for us mm -hmm. and it's like we try to give them advice on well this is a drexel i just had one the other day drexel mill work indoors it was like stain was clove i want to well, say well, and andy and i actually because andy rettler shout out to him and sue yeah. just went through mm -hmm. the process yep. to learn yep. he hasn't come back and consulted with you guys yet has he no no so we actually talked about yeah no yeah. it's a super yeah. great thing we maybe even put andy here to, to explain his experience but mm -hmm. from his words to my experience right one thing that we absolutely have to do is a google doc mm -hmm. and saying these are the following items that were spec because that Correct. was the original yeah. idea because i don't want to go i trusted in you yes spec mm -hmm. you, you are specking the product out and then it's really simple. They can walk into their builder in Drexel and say, here's my front door, here's my windows. Exactly. Here's the Drexel collection. This mm -hmm. is the LP siding mm -hmm. that I love. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to guess what that was. I so know. For sure. Have to keep I know. a Word document along, a Google Word document, I'm yeah. sorry. A uh, Google Doc <laughs> alongside it and, yeah. and do that as an attachment every time mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. Absolutely. It's something that we have to start mm -hmm. doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely mandatory for yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, what was what was what were we talking about? <laughs> so yeah, no. So, flying, then I, so then I did. Holly. We, Holly. Yeah, we did her home, and it we sent it to her, and she the response was just like, "Holy shit, that's my house. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Thank you so much." And it was like, "Yeah, this is why we grinded for the." How last often year. do you get that reaction? Honestly. <laughs> Can I be honest right now? Andy Rettler was the only person to not give us that reaction. Because he's so busy, I know, but he... He's so busy, no? He, Andy, no, you're not softball, busy. Softball, softball. He is, personal he's busy. Softball, like, personal, like... He's a loser. He's not that busy. He, <laughs> he goes to crappy Farmington baseball with EB and I Chris Amish. was and messaging... Alan Drexel lights. He's I was messaging busy. Andy Hop. And I was like, because Andy would say, oh, yeah, did Andy Rettler get back to you yet? Uh, nope. It's been, <laughs> it's been three days. Still nothing. Oh, he didn't, like, open it back up? Oh, he opened it. Or he just didn't give you a reaction? He didn't say anything. He didn't give you the emoji. He didn't say nothing. anything. He was the boy, but... He no, was, yay like, or nay. He was, the, he was the boy on Snapchat when you're like, wasn't there a Yeah, it rate? says red. And it wasn't says... The, wasn't the day it's open. And it said red, and you're like... And no one you're responded. Like, no response. <laughs> this is great. Day after Thursday. So I'm just right? sitting there sweating for the last week, like... Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it's really like the red Snapchat. Yeah. For sure. And then I send another one like... Did you get it, that? It was great, right? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to get ghosted again. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, you know, so then it was desperate. like, is this a test of like how we're going to follow up I was always a desperate... Someone? By the way, I was always a desperate boyfriend. Where I, you know me, God did not make me with patience. <laughs> I have a huge ego. I'm like, did you get this? I know you fucking got this. Are you sleeping? I'm coming over. Right? Tapping on but the window. Desperate, but I know I'm not desperate. <laughs> Funny. Especially if you had like seven beers on that. Oh my god. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, right. So, Andy, how did that end up? <laughs> um, well, then I was like, is this a test of like how we follow up yeah, with clients like or something? Strength, right? And it was like, and even Andy Hop was like, well, how do you guys follow up with clients? And we're like, we don't have to. They always respond. We have not. We had, literally, we every single one has We get the girl at the bar that does not have to yeah, text the boy exactly, first. Exactly. It's so true. Well, what happens when text the boy? We don't. <laughs> we always get a response. We really every do. Single, we save every single one of them. Yeah, we do. Yep. Every time. So is that so like rewarding them. as your career? Yes, yeah. it is. Making dreams come true? Yes. Like, where is this going to be in five years, Marcus? And everybody <sighs> listening and us, right? Like, to the moon. I, I cannot wait. I don't know. Why do you think it hasn't went... I hate the word. I like the word viral, but I hate it. How, why do you think this hasn't just exponentially grown? That sounds like I'm much smarter than viral. I think that there's still a lack of knowledge on 
everybody's part at Drexel as to what we actually do. I think Amber and I could get out there and sell it to anybody because we're in it day to day, but I don't think There's everyone's confident it. enough to sell it the to a client. The actually doesn't know what it is. Right. It says, or how it would benefit. Would you be interested? How would it benefit? Yeah. There's a good question. This is hilarious. Why do I have You're like swaying a knife for you. <laughs> like Harry Potter. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I swing my four inch pocket knife. This is but, a good topic. <laughs> <laughs> Why hasn't this gone viral? <laughs> so, okay, sidebar. <laughs> this is a horrible sidebar. So, I carry since January 1st. I thought I'd be like a Renaissance man. I just thought it was manly to carry a pocket knife. So, I just took it upon myself to carry a pocket knife. It was actually when Ross Harder actually saved that, tried to save that poor guy's life and he couldn't cut the seatbelt. Mm -hmm. So this has got a seatbelt cutter in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I found him online. I bought him for all of my family for Christmas, the pocket knife, actually all the boys with it. It's got some other doodads on it. I'm like, I don't start carrying a pocket knife, see how it's even worn out. Mm -hmm. So you know what I use it for? That's cut Amazon boxes. <laughs> I was gonna ask, have you ever had to use it? Basically yeah. it's sole yeah. purpose is Amazon boxes. boxes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got, I got, I got this one. <laughs> Right, and I, I took it, I, and then we were at the state girls basketball game. I'll never forget it, right? So did, they had security there. Oh, no. Right? So they had the security thing. And I'm walking, and I'm giving my phone, and then I got, and we just had parked a mile away. It's the rush Center in Green Bay. Yeah. And I just kind of put this over here, and I'm like, I can't take in a four-inch pocket knife, are you? They're like, no. <laughs> Can you just hold it for me? So I'm walking out, and it's Mike Melzer. Shout out to the Melzer family. And I've known him since high school. He's older than me. He always tries to bully me, but he's a little guy. You're a little guy. So he's like, what, why are you walking back? I'm like, oh, I got busted for a pocket knife. He's like, you carry a knife. A lot of people in the world. Why are you carrying a knife? Oh, that's why funny. did I carry a knife? Yeah. That's what I do. So. Yeah. Anyways. It looks like it's been Yeah, it looks like it's around been the used. block. It's in my pocket every day. Yeah. I mean you don't know when those Amazon boxes are just gonna <laughs> appear. Pop up. And they might have to be cut. And someday I may have to cut a piece of string, cut a deer. A piece of yeah. string. I don't know. Some string. I mean, shit shit happens. That shit's real with that thing. Wow. So okay. yeah, badass. Very. Wow, I don't that was sidebar. Right. Nope, so. me either. You can tell I miss these guys, right, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> High octane right now. So, oh, funny. Uh, we were talking about how can we get this into the marketplace more? What do what do people not know? I think a little bit of it is we we offer rendings. It's like my plans are already rendered. Or do they not understand? A little of my perception is I don't think they quite understand the need for it by the homeowner. Yeah. Like, oh, the homeowner's fine. Like, I don't think the homeowner is fine. I don't think mm -hmm. they have a clue what they're getting until it's way too late and they struggle with it. Can you do big houses? Like, look, okay, I'm going to try to give you, like, I'm going to try to think like a quarterback, which is an outside salesman for us, or a builder, and questions that might be holding them back, Mark, because you mm -hmm. try to do that game too, right? Or you guys, can you do a big shack? We can. We did um, the home that's actually on the screen right now. And <clears throat> the give me square footage. Oh, what was that one? Seven thousand eight hundred. Yeah. So you can do a seven thousand eight hundred square foot house, and that cost how much? That didn't cost the four hundred dollars, did it? Well. Mother Mary of God, please you tell me you charge no more, because that's a hell of a deal. Oh no, we oh, no, we no, charged no. them. We the charged them a lot. They wanted hour. every single room. Right, that was every the room. That yeah, was yeah, by yeah. the hour. Right, right. That was by the hour. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No worries. I thought the business model was crap. Um, like, oh, honestly, God. the biggest thing with we got a fifty-person uh, party for a value meal. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing with this one was we had to split it up. So Sarah did the lower level, and I did. The it's main, absolutely amazing, isn't it, Marcus? The main floor and the upper floor because of our, I mean, I don't want to I mean, make an excuse, but like our crazy. computers, we there's so much that goes into this, the lighting, the finishes. You broke the internet. We pretty, pretty much, much almost broke, broke our, our laptops. This thing broke the internet. <laughs> so we were like, oh, we got to be careful when we do big ones. But yeah, we can do it. We, we do will do it. We, we can, can do, do it. Do we just know we, we need more time. approximately? I don't remember. A couple grand? Three grand? Yeah, I would say like around between you know three exactly and eight hundred square yeah. foot house looks like. Yep. Well, That's and then the interesting home. thing with this one is there were I think it was like six like like master bedrooms yep. like mm -hmm. families that all lived in there mm -hmm. and everyone had a different style too so everyone had different boards yep. on pinterest so it was kind of like melding all of that together so there was a lot of I think design organization that went into it yeah. i think we're gonna i don't know marcus how you feel about this i think we're gonna come back here in five years and you guys aren't gonna be doing this you're gonna have a team that does this i hope so that's I, the I, goal I mean, personally and right like 
I yeah, mean, you're not I've lived, lived, in a couple, lived in a couple houses or whatever, but like I don't know if I was to build a new house tomorrow why I wouldn't go through that, mm -hmm. right? Like you would yeah. want to see as much as mm -hmm. you could, like virtually, like that's what it's going to be, as opposed to well, I think it's going to turn out really well, and you get yeah. there and you're like, I mean, yeah, like right? yeah, like, six inches. Sure, sure. yeah. First house yeah. I built in two thousand. Uh, we picked out silver ash vinyl siding, which is a light gray. It's still the house is still that color. We put it up. It was a sunny day. It had an absolute hue of pink. Mm. Absolutely, a hundred percent still does because we blended it with white, mm. and then we used uh, driftwood shingles, mm. and that combo gave it a mm. hue of pink on a sunny day. It was like, like you said, Mark. It was like, well, you know. Nice. You're, you're, you're going to talk sure. yourself into it, right? Like, hey, yeah. it's not really. I'll bad. never forget when we uh, built the house that we're in now, which is a very nice home. Uh, Pam, shout out to Pam, who's never listened to one pod, <laughs> but I will say shout out to her, so <laughs> she ever does. Um, she was like, "I want the roof line bigger. I don't think it's a big enough roof line," which that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. People want this this roof line, yeah. right? That looks flat on the two D. Yeah. And I'm like, honey, it's already like a twelve. Oh yeah. It's a fairly big house. Mm -hmm. It's fairly cut up. She's like, no, I think I want it bigger. So I think we did it 10, 12. Some spots are 12, 12. Wow. I'm like, yeah, and we're on top of the hill. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, this thing's going to be like a castle. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. for real. Mm -hmm. yep. This is what you like. Oh, I love that. I'll never forget. We're pulling up the driveway. They did a trust were set. She's like, well, it's not going to be that big. Oh, oh no. Boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, no. This is like after the hundredth time that I told her that we didn't need that big of a yeah. 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 I was like, well, we can't uh, shrink it. <laughs> but yeah. I had to come back and like, Pull it down. Yeah, yeah. And we're sure I'm not redoing it. She's like, really? It's going to be that big? I don't like it. That, and you that don't happens. Have, I, don't that think, happens. I don't think we understand how often that happens. Yeah. You know, we never told the builder. Right. We never came back to Kevin. You just Soleil. deal with it. You just deal with it. You mm -hmm. live with it. And yes, we do. Do we love our house? Yes. Yep. Is the roof mm -hmm. line too big? Yes. Did I overpay for that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Do you think that she would have paid $375 to? No. $375,000? I would have forced her to pay that much. <laughs> like, again, the, the, yeah, the 375 to, see to me seems comically cheap based mm -hmm. on a small three bedroom ranch right now is a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Yep. Would you, to trust and ensure your design selections are what you want? On a half a million dollar investment, why don't you hire a consultant? For sure. Okay, think about starting a business, right? We're going to all throw a half million dollars, and that's a really economic house right now. Uh, we're going to each throw a half a million dollars into a pool for a business model. If somebody came and said, you know, the percentage of that, 1% of 500000 is $5,000, right? right? So it's like 0.01% of your investment, I can give you a business model and give you a risk assessment and really lower mm -hmm. your risk of the chance of your business working or not. For like a quarter of 1%, it's less than a quarter of 1%, truly. It's like two tenths of 1% of your investment of your home to not make sure that you are gonna love what you are picking out. For mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's comical. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I can kind of tell. Mm -hmm. I think the business is going to work, but I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You're always going to have those people. Yep. So, you know, one thing that I think we could talk about, which I've been talking about a lot, I don't think you guys have ever heard this from me, but I've been saying it all the time. I read a book on hospitality. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are not surprised by that, right? And there's 100 <laughs> people in the room, and this happens in everything. And I don't think we've talked about this on the pod yet. I don't think so. Right, so there's 100 people in the room, this work in, works in every new trend. 17 people are early adapters, mega fans, trendsetters. If you think about it, uh, and I'll get to that, 67 are somewhere in the middle and listening and will adapt once their friends talk them into it, and 17 never want to change. Hmm. They're going to live that way for life. So the example that I've been using, if you think about it, it's totally true, right? DVDs to Netflix. I, I'm normally a very early adapter for technology. In that case, I wasn't. Normally, I am one of the first 17, mm -hmm. but not always. Like, it depends, but you find those first 17, and you give them the absolute love. So, I'm mean, empowering you to love the hell out of the builders that use it and get all their feedback. Because mm -hmm. what do early adapters do? The early people on Netflix, what do they do? Convince. They, the they're so excited. Yeah. 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 They've invested. Yes, it's cra Netflix is crashing, and it's not really good contact, and only half my TVs in the house have it, and... It's kind of frustrating, but when mm -hmm. I go with my friends, 
I'm like, dude, have you seen Breaking Bad? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, where are you yeah. watching this crap? Yeah. Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. And I remember going, my wife and I would get home and we'd be like, we weren't part of half the conversations. Yeah, right. And, mm-hmm. and, and it was like, okay, DVD, I got to try this Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. So I was one of the 67, but there's still 17 people out of that 100, mm-hmm. right, that are on VCRs and I get my Sunday paper and I read it, damn it. Yeah. Don't talk to me about this yep. Netflix crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yep. what we used to do at Drugsville for 30 years, we launch a product. And myself, I didn't understand that. I launched it and I'd be like, this is for everyone. And mm-hmm. I think we're trying to do that with this, actually. Yes. I think we said that a few times today. Well, you kind of talked on this a little bit with Offsite. A little bit, right? Huge on Offsite. We went to Lambeau Field with Offsite. Like, everyone kind of remembers that, right? Yeah. We built a house on Lambeau Field. Joel and Jason Blanker had this huge lunch. And it said, half of you, half of the homes we build, you builders will convert to this in less than five years. This is the way of the future. Mm-hmm. That's how we marketed everything when we launched things. Mm-hmm. And you guys are still a little bit talking that way, so maybe it's a good pivot for you guys even. What we did totally wrong, right? So we talked to a thousand builders there that day. 170 were like, this is so cool. I have tears in my eyes, sign me up. I'm never going back. I don't care if it's got some problems. I don't care if it's clunky. I don't care mm-hmm. if it crashes a little bit. I don't care if you gotta move some windows. I'm working with you, I'm all in, I loved it. 67 were like, well, that's cool. He built the house at Lambo. We'll just see how it all plays out. Right. And then what we didn't realize, 170 people were like, dude, that's so dumb. Drexel's totally off base. I love grabbing a hammer. That's never going to take off. Mm-hmm. Screw Drexel. They're not who they used to be. And we guys looking for a new supplier if this is the way they're going. Right. Right. So every person that you're getting excited, you're actually pissing off at the same time. Mm-hmm. So what we should have done was at a builder counter. If you're super pumped about offsite and want to learn more, come to room F. Let's sit yeah. down and talk and then mm-hmm. give them all the love they deserve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this is gonna be clunky. This is gonna be bad. Do you sure you want in? Mm-hmm. Invest in the future. Be one of the first people to download the app. It might suck, but this is the way it's gonna go, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe in virtual design, we have to do the same thing. For sure. Find that one builder and then treat them like absolute gold because they'll do all the selling for them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Find that one builder that's like, uh, I'll give them a shout out because they've been a recent big customer, right? Signature Homes, you walk mm-hmm. in their offices yes. right now, shout out to them on their digital billboards, in their marketing is like, we bring this, to, we bring your homes to life. Mm-hmm. We take your homes and bring them to life here at Signature and Fond du Lac. And again, shout out to them guys, yep. Glenn and Mason and all the boys up there and girls. So that's really cool. And I think we have to embrace the customers that want it, and but also not slamming the ones that don't. Yep. It's here as a tool, it's here as a design service, a consultation. We think you'd be interested in you. If it's not, we're continuing to support your VCR and your DVDs. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. But we're here. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> so I absolutely. Think that's, Maybe an interesting, yeah. mm-hmm. interesting as you have emerging product lines, trends, design components that we have to remember. It's really not about all 100. So I think when you do, I think the problem is when you do all 100, you're not giving enough love to your super. Yeah, position. exactly. And you're actually spending a lot of time with skeptical people, mm-hmm. and they're kind of waiting for to fail, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're, just waiting, they're just waiting for the first thing. We're like, ah, no, that see that yeah. doesn't work. You know, right? mm-hmm. No, yeah. no, no. I download Netflix. And I'm a, I'm a middle adapter, right? And it's early in the technology. And I'm like, see, I can't even, I cancel Charter. I can't even get the Packer game. Yeah. Yep. It, the, so I got half the movies I want to watch. Mm-hmm. And now I got to get Disney Plus too. And that's what the kids like. This is so stupid. They're set up to be skeptical. Mm-hmm. Now we're losing our energy. We're making changes that weren't warranted. We're trying to find more. And guess what? A customer that loves it that is commenting on all of our stuff online, mm-hmm. is giving us real feedback, would come like to the Netflix user conference, we're just throwing them in the same bucket. Yep, yep. And we're actually probably actually more with a skeptical person than like, I love your yep. app. But every time I go down the rabbit hole of your app, it literally does lead me to a dead end on this one page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Like, no, no, for real. Like, <laughs> let me be on a user mm-hmm. committee, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You gotta do a better job of having like user yep. committees like, Hey, come on down and show me what you think the next customers want next. Yes, for sure. Yeah. You know, what's wrong with their calendar? Like, whatever mm-hmm. that is. Like, exactly. Embracing those great, great customers because they will do all the marketing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because yep. those people like me at the Netflix, I, they're listening, they're watching, they see signatures Facebook, right? They're like, something's going on over there, mm-hmm. right? Or a homeowner goes, you know, 
do you have like what signature offers like damn it's like the third time i heard that this month <laughs> right I know. right so now that builder is like hey do you do what you do for them and that is i think correctly how you build the foundation of a new product a new category new technology and i think that brings in something that like we didn't even think would be a part of this we thought that it would just be for you know clients and helping them envision their dream spaces, but there's so much marketing involved. There's so many people that come to us and are like, we wanna use this for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. Where we just bought a, a plot of land, we're building a- um, Spec two, home. Yeah, spec home, let's say. It's spec home and modeling, because how do you sell a spec home to Hamilton? You can't. How do you convince the bank that the thing's gonna work? You're right. showing right? So it. So they don't have the cash, they're mm -hmm. showing it ahead of time. Yes. The quicker they can turn it, the qu and they need bank and they need investors. Mm -hmm. yep. Builders and developers by nature are not cash rich. Mm -hmm. They might be multi-billionaires with land, but they're not cash rich. Mm -hmm. They need to talk to investors. They need to talk to homeowners that are gonna buy that ahead of time, and put yep. cash down so they get into the next development. So you're correct, it's marketing. Mm -hmm. And it's also, this is it's a differentiator to that builder. That's a huge component of this. Absolutely. I mean, you're absolutely bringing sunshine on a dark day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're bringing all the sunshine. And we, yep. and we love sunshine. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. nice. Sunshine girls. Bring the sunshine. I love it. Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever get, and you kind of touched on this a little bit before, Amber, do you guys ever get too much information? Like Pinterest boards, like, whoa, well, like, where? how do we even start building this? Because there's all these ideas and they don't really mesh together. No, we love it. We love that. Honestly, like we love obviously all of our clients, but the one that has a vision, we love that. It's the one that's like, we have no idea what to do. It's like, okay, now we gotta roll up our sleeves and put more time into it. And this is something too, this used to be, you know, like, hey, Amber, Sarah, can you guys like speed this up so that we can get more in? And it's like, but how can you put time on something that you're putting creativity into? Right. And you know what I mean? Creativity yeah. needs yeah. gaps. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, creativity needs balance of gaps and thought processes. I think a lot of it though, when I, when I, and I still push for speed is, um, it's standardizing the questions. Yes. Yeah. It's finding the repeatable questions that get to the answer quicker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, read a lot of hospitality books and restaurants. As anyone that listens, knows me, listens to podcasts, knows I'm going to go down that path at some point. Mm -hmm. It's finding those cues at dinner mm -hmm. that are repeatable. Right. Uh, I've just said, you know, when like a really good restaurant, when do they interrupt you at the table to see how things are going? Yeah. Right. Uh, a bad, a poor restaurant never does. A mediocre to average one, which again is customer service, black and white, is saying, "Excuse me, does anybody need anything?" Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I know you're on your laptop. Do you need anything? An amazing one, and there are restaurants that do this. I've read hospitality books, right? They're trained on it. They have people actually watching as you put your coffee down. They're walking over, right? You're on your computer and you're totally. And the second you pick up your coffee and you put it down, that's when they come over and it's like, "Do you timing. need a recap? Do you need yeah. anything?" It's all timing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But how do you find those cues within mm -hmm. your questionnaires, mm -hmm. within your Pinterest boards to speed it up? Yeah. Without them feeling like they're sped up, mm -hmm. right? Without right. them feeling like that stress is on there. Yeah. Yeah. So like Pinterest boards, not having a vision. Okay, you don't have a vision now. I'm going to give you some stand again, especially if you build your team to five, ten, twenty people. Mm -hmm. You have to start thinking and writing. You're good note takers. Mm -hmm what can we say that always draws out that response? Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, we talk, yep. used to talk in the cabinetry world, do you do you host parties? Mm -hmm. Right, without actually saying, do you need a room for a large group? Yeah, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Et cetera, yeah. et cetera. What questions can we ask in the virtual design world that is- Gives us a like better that. idea of their style. Mm -hmm. And, and what's gets you to closer quicker, right? Yes, Versus yeah. talking for an hour and a half or yeah. something, 300. Right. Yep. Pinterest boards that I'm kind of piecing together for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. But I mean, speaking more on the future of this, like I truly see this as, you know, it's a virtual design consultation. But, and I just want to kind of pick your brain on this. Yeah, it's good. I feel like so there all are- off the board right now, everybody. <laughs> We're off grid. You know, oh, she's kicking me out of the table. <laughs> like, what is she about <laughs> to say? I, I feel like, are we ever maybe going to get to the point where there's some hand-holding at Drexel with selections? Meaning having like an in-house interior designer to assist homeowners with selections. I don't know. like. I don't know that answer, right? Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. 
would they pay for it? Is it warranty? And is this close enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or is this actually what they want? Yeah. Like again, if you actually end up with a spec sheet here, mm -hmm. do we yeah, keep, exactly. Do we keep, if we have a spec, spec sheet here, that takes that need away. Yeah. And I know me as a, and I'm not answering that question, so because I don't know what the future yeah. holds, and you guys are going to find that as everybody else in the Drexel team. But I guess in my opinion is, if I'm getting 95% this close through a few consultations virtually, mm -hmm. an interior designer for seven or eight hours sitting with me at Drexel. I want to poke my freaking eyeballs out. Mm -hmm. I just don't know in 2023 and 2025 who's going to want to be Who like, let's service. sit here on Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 4 mm -hmm. with an interior designer that's going to handhold me and pick everything yeah. out. Yeah. Because yeah. Sarah and Amber and her team just did that. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. And I'll and be I don't totally need to like, like go through it another time for eight hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that's where I'm No, at. Like, I get I'm, that. I'm, yeah. Marcus, what do you think? Again, you have a different opinion. No, I agree. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Why would you? I mean, I, again, I don't know if that'd be a generational thing where an older, you know, I don't know. Yeah. That's the only thing that comes to my mind why yeah. they would want mm -hmm. that, you know, where it's mm -hmm. that conversation and it's other than that, like, why would you if it's yeah. being generated? I just don't know if it's time for that anymore. Yeah. What do you think? When I can accomplish yeah. it, you go. So that's kind of what I wanted to get at was the time aspect of it. There's two of us for the entire company. If we are... If we are doing the virtual design for the client, so far we have not been providing spec sheets. It's pretty much been those like onesie right. twosie questions. Yeah. Like, if oh, someone what? really knows, yeah. then we'll yeah. Yeah. then we'll do it. But um, yeah, we haven't been. We really haven't been doing that. So if that's something that we're gonna move into doing, mm -hmm. like I see this blowing up quick. For sure. As in like getting bigger quick, not going bad. That sounds quick. great. You know what I mean? Exactly. Because at the at the I'm same time. Like, yeah, I just think it's great. Go ahead. I was just going to say at the same time, that's what an interior designer is providing for clients yes. is like, for lack of a better term, mood boards is what a spec sheet would be yeah. equivalent yeah. to. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? And if we're giving them the exact information. And spoiled little brat that I am, or Pam and I are, right? We did our basement. Mm -hmm. And our interior designer actually like, not only did the mood board, we were like, go get it. What do you mean? Oh, like went to the store and bought like a light, light or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. 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 That looks good. <laughs> just get exactly store, what's on there. It's like a light charge by the hour. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Go get it and bring it back. Yeah. yeah. Hang it right where you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Right and now, that's we're just not going to go that far, but you are right. going that far virtually. Yes. Like, I know. watch that. So, yes. And, and you know, we had a residential design part of it was a company loss. Mm -hmm. So you still have to think that way. I think you're still mm -hmm. thinking of that too. Like our yeah. cabinetry design, every design is a loss because it's, like, it's not revenue generated mm -hmm. is what that means. This still builds revenue, right? So this is a service, but it's a profitable service. So yeah, right. 10, 20, 50, 100 people in this department is good for Drexel, but good for the builder. And the spec sheet is good for the builder. Mm -hmm. It's good for the homeowner and it's good for Drexel. So yes, 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 yes. Spec sheet. I don't. Want, I do not want to go. Right. I mean, I couldn't imagine going through this, and then being like, right. Uh, who can I pick on? Pick on just. Just pick on me. I guess I pick on a quarterbacks enough, right? <laughs> okay. Well, what do you want? <laughs> I, I just. I want that. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know what that is. So. Yeah. I yep. mean. Huh. Mm-hmm. Right, Marcus. I mean, just tell them what it is. You know, that's that front door. That was mm -hmm. always the vision because we spent so many hours. Pricing out seven yeah. front doors versus that's it. And yeah. selections appointments can last six hours sometimes, you know? Yeah, and that is, I Insane. say a six hour selection meeting, <laughs> everyone's burned out. Everyone's oh, yeah, frustrated. done at three. Mm -hmm. Everyone's if people get in the car and they're in tears. Like, what just happened? I've gotten that so many times. Like back when I was in cabinetry, how like they would come in to see me. Let's say before I ordered yeah. the cabinets, and I'd have everything laid out for them, and they'd be like, "I don't even remember what I picked because I went in there and I picked everything, and they I didn't know what it don't. looked like." They don't yeah. Be like, what's yeah. The, what's the kitchen gonna look like? I don't know. For yeah. sure, and that is stressful. So imagine having this. Yeah. Like, you That's what watch I it want. every day. I just I with that, what I, yeah, and you get so excited. You show your friends yeah. and family. Oh, I'm so over. It. We're over the moon on time. At that time, big giant Ooh. billboard. What do we got and why? You go first. They're way <laughs> <hard. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Mine would be. This is a two beer podcast. Woo. Yeah. Mine would be um, be the reason someone still believes in the goodness of people. Reason being, it just comes down to like be kind. I mean, shit goes wrong all the time, but. Kill him with kindness. That's a shout out to Grandma Betty, also Nostrovia. 
But, um, yeah, she would always say, whenever I would complain about something, Amber, just kill him with kindness. And that's how I feel like I live my life. I feel like you live your life that way, too. I really 100%. feel like I do. But, and I, again, the, there's no downside to that, right? Mm -mm. There's no downside to that. And I do think we've talked a lot about Mother Teresa. That is how you change the world. Mm -hmm. Your kindness helps somebody else. That kindness helps somebody else. Mm -hmm. That one she door you opened us. up for somebody, that one situation you de-escalated, de mm -hmm. is going to help somebody else and help somebody else and somebody else. And that's how you change for the sure. world. Absolutely. It's a toxic, toxic world out there at times. So being that one mm -hmm. ray of hope is so powerful. Sunshine girls. <laughs> Speaking of toxic world, okay, so Amber and I were talking about this on the way here. I have a two-year-old. Well, she'll be almost three in August. And I read this years ago prior to having kids that we all know what social media has kind of done to the world, self-esteem, things like that. And after everything I've been through this past year and just changes, my body, everything has gone through, um, I've been living by this motto that no matter when my daughter wants to take a picture, whether it's with me or I'm in the background or whatever, never make a comment about anything. Just take the picture, smile, be happy, be present. It doesn't matter what you look like in that picture because how you react to that is how future generations are going to see themselves and how they're going to react to themselves. So that's kind of my take on... Just take the picture. Just take the picture. Is that your billboard? Take the picture? Take the picture. It doesn't so matter what... we got to take a little time out, though. we got to do this, even though it's 50 minutes, and you're still listening, we appreciate oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> so Sarah has had a life-altering event. I have. So let's see how long this takes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I don't know if I'm mm -hmm. going to cry or not. I probably will. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. So give us your journey. So in 2020, I had my daughter... Shout out to Marley. Amber, don't start crying. Or I'm I know, start I'm, like, crying. already <laughs> heading to the fridge for another beer. Um... I had a lot of issues while I was pregnant with her, gestational hypertension, gestational diabetes, um, preeclampsia, you name it. That was kind well, of like my journey. Exactly. Little did I know that this was all going to kind of just keep up and my body couldn't really, I guess, for lack of a better term, recuperate after the pregnancy. So last September, or I guess I should say last year, I was having issues with gaining weight, not feeling great, always being tired. I was eating healthy. I was exercising. I was doing everything that they told me I was supposed to do. They kind of knew something was off with some of my numbers and my blood work. Um, so they were sort of treating, I would say, peri periodically on it. But then last September, I think it was September 7th, I had a really bad stomach ache at nighttime ended up asking my husband to take me to the ER at about three in the morning. Got to You're the a tough girl, so like, it's on. Oh my gosh, I she mean, came in, sorry to interrupt, but she came in for weeks and would be have this little machine yeah, on her back. Yeah. I don't, what's that called? Tin a TENS unit. TENS unit. Like yeah. yeah, and she would lay on the floor sometimes like, are you, I'm like, are you okay? And I still, to this day, Joel, I kick myself. Like, why don't I tell her to freaking go to a yeah, doctor? she's so tough, right? I know. And the thing is, too, in, on that, like, Do topic, not. I had been going to the doctor. Like, right. they knew things were off and so whatnot. So you have the ER. So I'm at the ER, and at that point, I'm in so much pain, I black out, and I... At that point, it was two and a half weeks. I got transferred from that hospital to a different hospital because my kidneys had stopped working and I needed dialysis. And in order to do dialysis at that point, they have to go through your neck into your aorta. So only certain ICUs are capable of doing that. So they transfer me to St. Luke's. Shout out to my husband who works there who got me to where I needed to be. Um, and I was there for about two and a half weeks in the ICU. Um, heavily drugged, like hallucinating, went through all of that. ICU psychosis is a real thing. Never knew about that till I experienced it. Um, and I was diagnosed with necrotizing pancreatitis. So what that means is the tail of my pancreas um, died, theoretically, um, just from the inflammation um, due to a familial condition that I have. Um, so yeah, about four weeks in the hospital, um, I got finally got released after crying to my hospitalist because hmm. I was literally my parents were at a point where they were like either she needs to go into like a psychiatric ward or she needs to get out of this hospital like it was withdrawal all of that I mean like I never understood I, like I never have really done hard drugs like that before so like I never understood that world and like to be going through an actual withdrawal is the craziest craziest experience. So, um, 
because I was on like a push, yeah. you know, like the push heavy meds. So, um, and the craziest thing, and I haven't even told Amber this, which is super weird. So while I was laying in the ICU, I had a couple hallucinations. One of them being, I would see myself coming through the hallway in, um, I had high-waisted jeans on, a pink sweater, and I came in and I was rub or hugging all of my um, nurses and stuff. And I would see that from time to time. It couldn't have been more real. Yeah. Oh, it was me, 100%. And was it a dream I, of you? It wasn't a dream of you? It no, like it was like thing. me. That's her. I, yes. I'm looking at her. Because the room is just made up of all glass, yes, so you right. can see everything out there. The craziest thing, <laughs> now that we're talking here today, I've never told anyone this, is I had like visions. I didn't see it, but I had like visions, feelings that I would be here with you today talking about this story. Stop it right now. Like it's so weird. It. I've never told anyone that, but yeah. So Stop yeah. It. So we decided we weren't going to even talk about it. I know. You know, I, know. Like, God, I know. So yeah, needless to say, I finally get out of the hospital and then I started dealing. I didn't realize how long this was going to be of a recovery. Um, I would say within the past couple weeks is really when I finally started to be stable. But I had to have drains put in to drain all of the fluid in my abdomen. I had what was called compartment syndrome. If you don't know what that is, it pretty much means that your body's swelling up so much. I pretty much was like pregnant with triplets in the ICU. So all of that pressure caused major back issues. So yeah. my my back completely herniated at one place. Um, so I was kind of going through all of these issues. Like, am I ever going to walk again? I was wheelchair bound, going yeah, to I, PT. I mean, totally sidebar, right? I'm four layers away from Sarah, texting your yeah. father-in-law once in a while, like where's Sarah at? I'm hearing, I'm talk, talking to Amber occasionally, uh, other people obviously mm -hmm. that you're close to. and. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Like, I didn't get good stuff. I'm like, is yeah. she ever coming back? It wasn't about work, but is she ever walking? She'd be again? okay. Yeah. Is she gonna live? Yeah. Yeah, my like, parent, no, no. my family was like, and Amber was in the depths with my family. They had many conversations of who can be in, who wants to be in the room with me while they intubate me, and you know, put me on life support, and yeah. they wanted to cut my abdomen open and let all like the pressure out. So I mean, they were. Somehow I kept breathing and that's really all it came down to alive. was the fact that I just kept breathing because I had so much really fluid around my lungs. They, they didn't they didn't know what they were going to have to do. So I don't know. Someone was in my corner. My grandma, I felt her there, which is so weird. When I got transferred there, I found out I was in the same exact, like I was on the same floor my grandma was in when she passed away at the same hospital. So I was just like, I know my grandma is here with me. Like. Oh. And I, then I'm the, such a God guy. Oh, even the last so three true. Or five years, like if you believe in God, and well, I always go through the whole steps, right? Do you, if you don't know if you're a believer or not, do your own research, mm -hmm. which I did uh, for many years of my life. Like then I realized, like, oh my gosh, Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. And then when you do, like, if Jesus is real, then what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that means his teachings are real. Then what? That means there is no coincidences. Yeah, right. and shit gets real, real when you're then when you become hyper aware of things mm -hmm. and realize yeah. what the Holy Spirit's doing and why he's doing it mm -hmm. and hallucinations and visions like them are real things mm -hmm. in some way. Not and the scary thing, thing about those too and now that I'm yeah. doing a lot of my research after the fact is yeah, right. so that happens saying, a lot yeah. of the time right. when people are very, very close to crossing yeah. over uh. to the other side. So I'm actually... So I have a feeling you really, really work. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have those transition. I mean, I've read a lot of mm -hmm. your life death experiences. Yeah. God's preparing you to make those steps mm -hmm. in his way, you know. Yeah, wild. Wild and the yeah, craziest they, they thing. Hallucinations, but, yeah. you know, the crazy part about that is you could have hallucinations, ICU, social media, somebody told you to have them, heavy drug use, brain manipulation. People have been having them for thousands mm -hmm. of yeah. years mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. different cultures. The Native Americans had them. Yeah. The, the Chinese people had them. Roman Empire mm -hmm. had them. That's when it's like your okay. energy. Your energy yeah, is like somewhere. The soul is real. Like, it's so mm -hmm. true. It's not your body. It is your soul so reacting to true. something. Yep. And your body sucked, but your soul didn't change. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Also, it's like I also think that's like why I feel like I'm 23, right? Uh huh. Because mm -hmm. my soul, soul is not aging. Yeah. No, my, my soul is just who I am. Right? Yeah. Once I got to my For soul, sure. my soul is just yep. my soul. For mm -hmm. sure. Don't matter one bit. Yeah. Like, oh, like, I love like that. My body sucks and yep. it's deteriorating. <laughs> I love that. Escalating rate, but my soul is forever my soul. Yeah. I have connection with certain people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We all do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I'm like, that's because it's your soul. Your soul like, is connected to that person. that person. You're connected to that 
person. That's a real thing. So mm-hmm. true. It's super, and it's natural, right? Yeah. Like those kind of people, I feel like I've known forever mm-hmm. because you have. Mm-hmm. Like I think I've known you forever. Like you have. Like I, I have friends, like they bring things up, right? And it's like I already kind of knew it, mm-hmm. right? You think about it, right? You're like I kind of knew it. Yeah. Or like I have, a, sometimes I have a really bad memory. But with those people, I remember every detail, mm-hmm. and they do too, because yeah. their souls connected, mm-hmm. right? So interesting. Keep so going. interesting. I was just going to add too. So while I was, it's like, it's like a <laughs> I, I, just, I just forgot we had fifteen minutes on the podcast. We're like, so, like, 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 like we're going here, okay? To even get crazier with that. So while I was sick, my uncle, my dad's brother, um, who was also my godfather, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which was like we didn't have. We didn't have pancreatic cancer in the family. So it was odd. I'm going through this severe necrotic pancreatitis. He has this. Um, He was diagnosed in September, I think, August or September, and passed away by December. And one of his last wishes was to have me come um, see him because him and I hadn't seen each other since I was out of the hospital. So we're sitting there, and when I went to go say goodbye to him, um, you know, I told him, like, please thank Grandma for saving me. And he, he went and told me that he had been seeing my grandma and my grandpa on the bridge, waving at him, waiting for him to cross over. And it was just a profound experience that, you know, someone was, it wasn't my time. Like, she still wanted me here. So, ugh, I, didn't to, <laughs> I didn't mean to cry uh, today, but it's been a journey. So how motivating that is, like... I know oh, I'm. Purpose s- for me, yeah. And I will get to it. Is that how you feel? For sure. And I'm like, as crazy as it is, as it is, I'm so less scared to die now. I have no fear of death. Now I'm more so scared to lose my independence again, and like be in a yeah. nursing home or something yeah. like that. That's uh-huh. where all of my fear lives now. I used to be scared of death. Now it's like, no, I know something's there. Like I mm-hmm. feel it. Yeah, I'm, I've always said that too. Like I, people, have, I talk about death a lot. Um, you and my wife, so I was like, gosh, you talk about death. <laughs> I don't fear it. Yeah. Like, I just can't believe 7 billion people on the planet don't ever talk about that. Yeah. Like, yep. I'm like 50 years, I'm 49, I'm pretty sure something's going to happen yeah. that we don't For talk sure. about. For sure, yeah. But yet, I have no fear because it, it's, just, it's a transition. It mm-hmm. totally it's is. It's a transition. And I, so many people with near-death experiences are no longer fear death. And no. It goes into the extreme level, but mm-hmm. it was pretty close. Yeah. You know, and I, I do think even... Yeah, it's very challenging, those people that have that nursing home experience and that, but it is part of their journey. It is mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. sacrifice they're making that it is not their body, it is their soul. Yeah, For sure. Yep. For sure. I mean, I even think about when, you know, I, I just feel like inspired to say that right now, is even when you're talking to somebody that you're really close to, do you ever notice how, like, an hour conversation feels like five? Like, yeah. you've been talking for 90 minutes? Yeah. That's because time's not real either. Mm-hmm. Right? If you think of it, souls are That's eternity. Crazy. Souls don't recognize time. Yeah. Bodies do. The earth does. Mm-hmm. We have to be somewhere to be. When you're literally talking to soul, soulful people, mm-hmm. you know, that last seven, eight minutes, or maybe it was 30, right? Like, yeah. We're just talking to soul people. We had, we weren't aware of the outside. I wasn't aware of time, mm-hmm. which thus means what? That's kind of how I think heaven is. Yeah. Oh, I love into that. It. It just, you're just into it, right? Yeah. You're just mm-hmm. into it. Yep. Right? And there's moments where we catch ourselves in that, right? Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, that was just like three hours. I was yeah. just playing catch with my son for like 45 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Like just real experiences, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's that just, how, how did that time just flew when mm-hmm. we were together? Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? And it's life, but then you get caught back up in the world, which is mm-hmm. okay too, but you yeah. have to be aware of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So take the picture. Take the picture. Yeah. You never. I mean, I look at my daughter and just think of all the years I could have, she could have had it without a mom, too. I look at it from that perspective, and it doesn't I matter. Think, she doesn't care what I look like. She doesn't care yeah. if I have makeup on. Yeah. She doesn't care if I'm dressed nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just take the picture. Like, yeah. Just live it. Just live it. Mm-hmm. As we're both, like, sobbing over here. Yeah. Poor Amber. We shout out to her. In this room. <laughs> shout out to Amber. She was Good like, <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> she was there for my family so much, and oh, I just appreciate my circle. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I prayed for you very hard. Thank you. Nice. Oh, yes, I did. It worked. I really did. It yep. worked. It wasn't my, my time. Not, it was not your time. It wasn't my nope. time. Mm-mm. But God bless those nurses. Oh my gosh. Yes, they are angels on earth. I couldn't mm-hmm. do that. Angels for a day. on earth. They really are. There's amazing people in the And world. the doctors, mm-hmm. too. But, man, those nurses, they just get so close to your family. They go day, minute by minute, mm-hmm. hour by hour. Yeah. yeah. 
helping you through whatever mm -hmm. needs to be helped with. And it is supporting the family and friends as much as For possible. sure. Yep. The patient as hard as that sounded for you. So we're so glad to see you. Oh, thank back. you. I'm we so happy so to much. be back. So, so glad that you're back. <laughs> We'll reconnect. We'll have another. I have a feeling we're going to have another podcast with these ladies at some point. Heck yeah. 87 is in the book. Love you all. Peace.